Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We are in 1 Peter chapter 3. We will be finishing verse 8 this lesson. But before we begin our theme verse for Lunch with the Lord, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we finish here verse 8, we want to uh, remember that verses 8 through 12 deal with proper behavior of believing Jews. Now, remember, Peter here is writing to believing Jews who have been scattered throughout Asia Minor because of the persecution that happened by Nero in Rome. And these Jews had to flee for their lives and get out of Rome or get out of the area of Rome. And many of them settled in Asia Minor. And Peter here in his, in this letter to them, he stresses to them, uh, different parts of submission, submission to our bosses, submission to, if you're a, if you're a servant in a house, submission to your master, uh, submission, um, at work, submission of the wives to the husbands, and then also, how the husbands are to love the wives and honor them and respect them. But now he finishes in verses 8 through 12 of chapter 3 here, and he gives them proper behavior. This is a, these are general encouragements of, of Paul to these people of how Christians should behave towards each other, or, and also towards the world. So, he says here in verse 8, uh, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, and then today's lesson we start with, be pitiful and be courteous. And pitiful, the Greek word is eusplanchnos, and the prefix eu, which is eu, means well. And splanchnon means the heart. In Ephesians chapter 4 and in verse 32, the same Greek word, eusplanchnos, is used and it's translated tender-hearted. So Peter here is encouraging these believing Jews as they relate to other believers who have themselves been scattered and have lost basically everything uh, and, and have relocated to a whole new area of the world. He's saying to them to have be pitiful towards them, be tender-hearted towards them. It means, this, this Greek word means that in your approach to Christians, be tender-hearted, not suspicious, if there's no reason to be. You know, we as human beings, because of, we have an old sin nature, because we have this tendency uh, within us to want to be negative, there is this, there is this tendency in us to want to be suspicious. All right? And, uh, but Peter here is telling them, don't, don't be suspicious of one another. And, and encourage people, be, be tender-hearted towards them. Don't always be, don't always be taking a step back and, and being curious or, or suspicious or, or, or judgmental towards, towards your brethren. Again, we're, we're finite beings. We don't know everything. And, uh, we need to give people the benefit of the doubt and to love them and encourage them as God does, all right? And it also means to not be jealous or looking on their outward appearance because that also can cause a lot of, of problems. Is When we look at someone's outward appearance, it causes us to make a judgment or have, or it, give, it gives, <laughs> it's almost like it gives us a, a bad first impression of that person. And we shouldn't do that, all right? Remember, 1 Samuel 16, 7, God sees the heart. 
God sees the heart. He's not looking on the outward appearance. I mean, he sees the outward appearance, obviously, but he's God main main vision in in your life is the heart. It's your heart, all right? So it also show tenderness to the unsaved, to those and how do we show tenderness in this world to the unsaved? This yes, you can show tenderness at work, uh, 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 somebody at work uh, is going through a hard time. Maybe uh, their their child is sick or or has to go to the hospital or whatever. Uh, unsaved people go through problems also, you know, and 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 they have problems and and difficulties. And we can show tender heartedness. We can encourage to to pray for them. And pray, maybe, maybe if you can, pray with them. But you can do it to nurse in nursing homes, being tender-hearted. Uh, but in nursing homes, in hospitals, in in to single single parent families, okay, and those going through difficult times in this world system, uh, the unsaved go through tremendous difficult times. Why? Because they have no hope. This hope, this world system, is their only hope. It's their only, their only uh, uh, goal in life is to be happy in this world system, and it's sad because we have a hope. We have a hope of another world outside of this, a world where there is no sin, where there is no depression, where there are no more heartaches where there's no more tears no more tears and 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 we have a tremendous blessed hope that we can give to people and unsaved people their only hope in life is what they can make of their life here on earth and and and, and again it's sad because you look around you and you say how can this how can this be our only hope if 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 this world system was my only hope, then then it's it's sad. So he says, "Be be pitiful," and then he says, "Be courteous, be courteous." And this Greek word for courteous is ty 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 phone and it means to be lowly minded to be lowly minded to be humble and lowly towards other is a necessary virtue among believers it's a necessary now if we turn to chapter 5 of first peter and when we continue these studies and when i finally get to chapter 5 and in verse 5 we will expound on this also again but it says here in chapter 5 and in verse 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. So, Peter here is encouraging the younger, younger people. It's not talking just about unsaved, but younger people submit yourselves unto the elder unto older people all right yea all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility we are to humble ourselves to others to those around us all right why why is this important because for god resists the proud and gives grace to the humble now the greek word for resist is antitasso, antitasso, and anti, of course, means against, and tasso means to arrange, all right, to arrange, and it's a military term, and it means to arrange yourself in battle against someone or something, all right, so antitasso, it means that you are setting yourself up to do battle with someone else or something else, okay? So, 
why is it important that we humble ourselves to those around us? We humble uh, the younger are to honor and humble themselves unto the elder. It doesn't just say humble yourself unto your mother and father. No, but older people, because older people have gone through life and they have words of wisdom to give to the younger, all right? So the younger submit and, and are humble to the old, to older people and everyone should be humble one to another. Why? Because if if we don't practice humility, then the Bible says God resists the proud. God resists. God will set himself up and do battle with you. If you, if you continue to rise up in your heart with pride and arrogancy and this puffiness, puffing out your chest and looking down on people, the Bible says God's going to do battle with you. It doesn't mean you lose your salvation if you're saved. It doesn't mean that. What it means is, is if we're going to continue in our mind and in our heart to approach, approach other believers or to approach other people with a haughty, proud, arrogant attitude, then get ready. Get ready. <laughs> because God's coming. God's coming. He's, he's going to do battle against you. All right? But, but, if we do humble ourselves, the Bible promises us, God gives what? Grace. He gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. So it's better, <laughs> it's better for us to get to, to humble ourselves and to receive God's blessing of grace than to rise up in our old sin nature and want to do and and want to uh, be arrogant or be proud, right? When Jesus was with his disciples and they finished dinner, right? They were sitting at the table and they finished dinner, right? The Bible says that Jesus sat back and put his feet up, and he st he told one one person to uh, uh, get him some dessert, and he told another disciple to. Uh, uh, do this, and another disciple to clean up the plates, and another disciple to do all that, right? Huh? No. No, no. The Bible says when they finished, when they, when they finished uh, having dinner, the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus took a cloth, bound it around his waist, and what did he do? He washed the disciples' feet. He humbled himself, and he washed their feet. Here's God Almighty, the creator of this universe, Almighty God, all omnipotent power, right? With all omniscience, knowing everything, Almighty God bends down and washes their feet. No, no, he doesn't, he, he's not, he's not, you know, ordering around saying, hey, I need somebody to wash my feet. Uh, I'm not cleaning this table up. I mean, you guys clean it up. You know what I mean? It's like, you guys help make this mess too. <laughs> no, no, no. Jesus washed their feet, all right? And if Jesus can humble himself to do that, we also are to humble ourselves to other people and to give them honor and respect and, and to receive God's blessing of grace to our life. So he says, so he says, be pitiful and be courteous. In Philippians chapter 2 and verses 2 and 3, it says, fulfill, Paul here tells these Philippians, and you can, again, pull up my lessons on Philippians, and it says, fulfill ye my joy that ye be what? Like-minded having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. See, this only happens through humility. The only way you can be like-minded, having the same love, having being of one accord and of one mind, the only way that happens is through humility. It doesn't happen through each person uh, claiming their own arrogance, claiming their own, well, this is what I think and I'm sticking by it, you know. 
No. Verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in what? In lowliness, in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other as what? Better than themselves. Let each esteem the other person as better than themselves. Now, this does not mean, this does not mean that we purposely think of bad things about our life and so that we feel guilty and condemn ourselves so that we can, you know, uh, put them on a pedestal. We can, we can esteem them better because, well, the only way I can esteem that person better than me is uh, I'm going to have to think about some sins and, and feel guilty about myself, right? No, it doesn't mean that at all. It means that we honor others as a child of God. If they're saved, we honor them as a child of God, as having a great price in God's eyes. In the eyes of God, I can, I can humble myself to this person because I see them as a child of God and as a person who is of great price in God's eyes as having God's righteousness and as also having all of the promises of God given to them. So I look at a person and I can humble myself to them because I see them as God sees them, as holy and righteous with God's imputed righteousness, as a child whom God deeply loves and cares for, right? All the promises, all the blessings of God are for that person. And because of that, I can humble myself and honor that person, all right? Until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.